General, you call for me. Step inside, Vamon. How do you find your quarters, General? I find my quarters just fine, Commander. That's not why you were summoned. You see, something's been bothering me. Mia? I've spoken to your men at the Keep, and their story is the same as yours. There was a riot instigated by the Resistance. In the ensuing chaos, Apostle Alvani was killed. His body was, inconveniently, burned in the fire. It was a bloodbath, one that someone will have to answer for someday. Certainly, General. I will see to it. I'm sure you will. I also spoke with some of the surviving prisoners. Their story diverged significantly from yours. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. They're a treacherous lot, looking for any excuse to spread discord. Maybe so. But before the riot broke out, the Warden claims he was ordered to execute the Apostle. By you, personally, Commander. Lies! The Infidel is trying to save his own skin. Perhaps, but what reason would he have to lie? It doesn't absolve him of any responsibility in regards to the riot. He still awaits his trial at Coldstone. He tells me the Executioner's sword had been sharpened to take Alvani's head at first light. I'm not saying I trust the man. He's a cruel little person. But he appears to respect the chain of command. And what did the prisoners tell you? That the riot was set in motion to free the Apostle, not murder him. And that it succeeded. That's preposterous. Kian Alvane is ashes. He walks in shadow, lost and afraid, far from the glory of the first mountain and the light of the goddess. So you tell me, Commander, and I'd hate to think you're lying to me or omitting the truth. Your relationship with Alvane. There was animosity. You knew each other when you were boys. Ah, oh, we had run-ins. When we were both on the streets of Sidia, it wasn't uncommon. But your rivalry was bloodier, went deeper than boyish pranks. It was a long time ago. We were past that. I want to believe you, Commander. Your position here is important to me. To the Six. To all of Azadir. Have I not always served the Goddess and my people here? Have I not proven myself to the Six and the Council? To the Seat? To you? Any suggestion that I'm less than faithful? It greatly offends me. As it should, Vamon. I have no wish to discover you've been lying to me. I have no wish to see you placed in chains. I want to believe you. And for now, I do. But I will continue investigating this matter, because something about it is not right. Something about it bothers me. If you know something, I urge you to come to me as quickly as possible before I learn you've kept the truth from me. I have not. I walk in the light, Mir. Everything I do, I do for my nation and my people. Very well. You may go. May the Goddess protect you, General. The light shine upon us all and illuminate our path. Night, Ulvik! What news do you have for us, Ulvik? Right, so a man comes into my bar this afternoon. Azadi soldier, off duty. Has a few beers, starts getting flushed and loose-lipped. Man says there's talk of a raid. This very night, in the magic ghetto. And there's a list. A list? The ones they're targeting. The ones they're bringing back out again. But why now? I mean, it's... it's not payback, is it? He did mention the weapons shipment that got blown sky-eye last week. Caused a fair bit of ruckus, that. Was the talk of this place for days. Seems some people enjoy a good explosion. Apparently, the commander of the Azadi Special Forces took it as a personal insult. A commander... Vamon. He would take that personally. Also, man said, there's been more weapons and supplies being smuggled into the city, right under Azadi noses. Well, they've caught a few shipments, so they know people are arming themselves in the ghetto, that there's trouble brewing. Mole's been more cooperative than usual. Whatever you did for Kian, 
It appears to have been appreciated. So, the way I see it, the Azadi might want to make a decisive strike tonight, before they lose control of Old Town. Well, they're not wrong. So, we need to find out who's on this list, and we need to know when they're going to strike, and from where, and Patient we need to- Patient One thing at a time. First, we must learn if, when, and where this raid is taking place. Then we must warn our friends, including the Mole. And then we must get our own people to safety before the Azadi come. I have a few contacts I can poke. Liko? I'll start with our people in the ghetto. Kian, if you could pay the Mole a courtesy call. That won't take long. Is there anything else I can do? I doubt it. Let's meet back here before midnight. Will do. Good luck, the both of you. Watch your back. Alvik is a good man. I enjoy his company. He's true to his word. I trust him with my life and consider him yeah, a friend. They may have a word. In private, I have a message from a common friend. She wishes to see you alone as soon as possible. She told me she'd wait for you where all of Old Town lies below us. Wherever that might be. She does like to speak in riddles, that one. Thanks, Alvik. And when you do see her, tell her it's time she paid her tab. She won't receive another drop of Merry Minstrum until she does. Did you hear the one about the magical and the pregnant? Hey, who goes there? Must have been the wind. It's a nice view, isn't it? I've always found Mercuria beautiful, especially in summer. Of course, those metal tubes are a bit of an eyesore. And that tower... Actually, the tower I quite like. Why did you want to meet me? Oh, so impatient. <laughs> you always were. I've been saving something for a rainy day. Someone, actually. And, well, no rain at the moment. But, the forecast for tonight sounds grim. It can't hurt to pool our resources and share information. She knows something about tonight. Saving someone for a rainy day? There's an Azadi officer, high-ranking, a captain. He has, uh, an arrangement with a young woman in Old Town. A non-human. He's fucking a magical. Eloquent, but yeah, he's fucking a magical. We both know what it would do to his career if anyone found out. Let's strip him of his rank. He'd be arrested, tortured, most likely sentenced to death. All for a little blue girl and some exotic sex. Your people are so predictable, Azadi. So easy to compromise. You know, the more things you forbid, the more sins there are to be tempted by. You're a nation of the repressed, a powder keg ready to blow. But how will this information help us? Today is this officer's day with his young lady. She has a room near Shady Quay. 
Our horny captain never goes alone. The fool brings his uniformed knave to keep watch, which is convenient, like a big arrow pointing to the right door. If you were to confront the captain in a compromising position, there'd be no limit to what you could accomplish. Why give me this information? You could have profited from it yourself. I have no need for money or leverage. But I thought you could put this to good use. Find out what's going down. Maybe stop it. Save some lives. We'll take some. I thought you didn't care about the resistance. I never said that. I never said I did either. But maybe I care for other things. Why did you bring me all the way up here to tell me this? Because I don't trust them or anyone. I've been burned in the past. But why me? Because you, Kian, I trust. This isn't right. I can't reject her. This is... Anna, wait. After my shift's over, who's there? Next week, I get to leave Mercuria for the first... If you're a ghost, just leave me be! Goddess, I'm tired of standing here night after night with nothing happening. Sometimes I almost wish the rebels oh, would attack. Are you here know? from I heard somewhere. Anyone there? What do you want? I need to speak with the Mole. She's not expecting you. She'll want to hear what I have to say. Fine. But keep your hands where I can see them.
Has all the apostate not dead yet? I expect you'd be dead by now. If you live this long, you might even make it to my age, but I don't recommend it. When your bones ache each morning and you can barely hold your liquor anymore, you curse the gods for keeping you alive. You come to warn Mole, then. How did you know? The Mole always know. Whispers travel on the wind and voices reverberate through the soil. There's word of raid happening. Of course, no one know for sure. The Azadi usually stay out of Old Town, afraid to cause ruckus, upset the order of things, afraid of people rising up against them. Though times do change. Whether Azadi attack happen or not, Mole's prepared. Don't you worry about the Mole. Mole has burrows. Besides, it may be time to leave Marcuria altogether. Those infernal machines your people build make my fur stand on end. They crackle. They buzz. They are opposite of magic. Make Mole's head pound. Don't know what they're for and what'll happen when they're all done building them, but Mole don't like it. Don't like it one bit. Something's coming, Kian of the Rebels. I smell it. I feel it in my whiskers. In my aching bones. Something unnatural. Something mean. There's no room in my curia for magic or for magicals. Not anymore. No. Whether a Zardi attack is coming or not. It's time for the Mole to dig other burrows. Or perhaps return home to the birth burrow. Find an old familiar hole to sleep in. Sleep until this shadow has passed. Or until... Until we're all of us dry bones beneath the soil. You may consider your warning delivered. This is the last you'll see of me. The last you see of the banda, the burrowers, the little ones who sink to the soil. My people, all gone. You tell your shepherd she's welcome to everything in my possession. All the weapons and food and medicine. All you need to keep fighting. Watch your hide, Kian of Clan Alvane. These are dark times, and you're at the heart of it all. Well, why are you still here? Go, go! May the soil be ever soft under your feet, Apostle. The fate of worlds falls on you now. He's guarding the door to that house. This must be where that Azadi officer meets his... his girl. There's official Azadi business going on here. You'll want to turn around and walk away. The Magicals keep their heads high despite the Azadi threat. It's a testament to their resilience. There aren't a lot of stalls open here. 
Maybe because it's late. Maybe business is slower these days. Or maybe the other vendors have been arrested. I've got sorted tatters from keep me in mind next time you pick. Right. 100 natural products! Cured Elgwyn meat. Pick, what can I do for you, friend? Would you care for a tasty sandwich? Your sign says sandwiches and fire flowers. Ah, yes. Used to be I made the best fire flowers in Old Town. Spectacular things that lit up the night sky. Sparklers and illuminations, crackers and flyers. But no more, I'm afraid. Alchemy apparently falls under the definition of magic these days and is therefore strictly forbidden. I can make you a savoury sandwich, though. Guaranteed sand and witch free. I've seen fireworks in the past. I'd like to buy one of your fire flowers. Can't help you with that, I'm afraid. The Azadi have banned the use of illuminations, crackers, sparklers and flyers. Any and all alchemy. How about the ingredients? I would only need some of your powders and... My hands are tied, friend. Or at least they will be if I sell you any of my alchemic powders and potions. The orders are quite clear. There's to be no trade of any sort in magical items. In fact, I should probably clear away those chemicals later today. This place is flush with thieves and mendicants. Can I tempt you with a savoury sandwich? I'm the best sandwicher in all of Old Town. Also the only sandwicher in Old Town. Even if I was hungry, though, I'll have one of your sandwiches. Brilliant! Step right over here, friend, to my sandwiching table. Step right over here, friend, and we can get started. Now, will that be on fried flatbread, steamed yeast bun, or a baked grain roll? I'm quite sure this is unimportant. What was that again? I really have no idea. Um, grained rake bowl? Raked rain grill. Grain roll baked balance. Baked grain roll. That's it. And just a dash of this and a dash of that and some of this and a bit of that. How about some fermented moon seeds with that? Anything to keep her distracted? Yes, please. Splendid. Midnight snack. Early breakfast. Nibbles, scrub, <laughs> tasty morsels. Hey, what? Oh, good, you're back. Now, stay still while I prepare your sandwich. Now, meat. Today, I have a cured elguan, pickled saltwater snapjaw, and kitten carpaccio. Kitten? Kitten? My apologies, that's kit A carpaccio. A delicacy of the Rose Court. More of a, a doggy taste to it. Doggy? Doggy. It's a bird. Tastes like chicken. Ah, yes, then that, please. You better be hungry, you better not be fed. The sandwich maker's knife is cutting up your bread. Sunny side gets cheese, and the other one gets meat. A sandwich maker's craft is, uh, something, something... Feet! Oh, would you like some crispy bitter leaf? Anything? Yes, please. Splendid. Nibbles. Didn't I tell you to stand... What are you doing, friend? Are you stealing from me? Surely you're no thief. A tall, strapping fellow like yourself. My snack. Early breakfast. Fully authorised and licensed. Hey! Did you find that turncoat you were looking for? I did. Thanks to you. Did you kill him? I did not. He's in our custody. You should kill him. He's a traitor. Well, 
Sometimes even traitors deserve second chances. Really? Huh. Are you on another mission? Perhaps. I'm sorry, boy, but I'm quite busy. Let me help. He might actually turn out to be useful to me. You want to help? Yeah. Even if it's dangerous? What do you think? Uh, what do you know about fireworks? You mean five flowers? I know everything. My father makes back Shivan candles for the festival of turning every year. Fine. Follow me. Yes! Hello again, friend. Hungry? Peckish? Hankering for a savoury sandwich? I'll have one of your sandwiches. Brilliant! Step right over here, friend, to my sandwiching table. And just a dash of this and a dash of that and some of this and a bit of that. A dash of pungent oxy topping, yes or no? And a, yes, please. Splendid. Quickly, grab those ingredients. Can do. Ordered, mostly. I had to make a few alterations. Remember to chew well and don't swallow too soon. Also, if you feel any discomfort whatsoever, a spoonful of vinegar should do the trick. If not, please visit a physician post haste. Tasty morsels. My table's always open, day and night. How was that? That was perfect. But remember, stealing is wrong. You told me to steal. In this case, it was justified. But don't steal. You'll lose a hand or, or your head. Here's the stuff. You said your father taught you how to make fire flowers. Well, uh, sort of. He made Bakshivan candles, and I watched him make them. But he never let me do it myself. Said it might blow my fingers off or burn my eyes out, but I can give you instructions. Fair enough. What do I do first? First make the glowy balls. I don't know exactly how to make the glowy balls, but when my dad did it, the balls came out all glowy. Crimson crumb, used for colouring things a deep red. I've got the non-magical medicines your body needs. Fully this stuff is similar to our black powder, except it burns longer and slower. It's a potent explosive that can act as a propellant for both mu- From what I can recall of my alchemistry, essence of sunworm is produced by leaving the worms out in the sun until they blister and ferment, after which they're squashed and filtered into bottles. Good. Now you need to make the firepowder, somehow. My father was never too clear on how that part's done. All I know is that it's powder that went psst when it was lit. All that's left is to combine all the ingredients in a tube. That should be easy, right? You start with... And then the glowy balls on top, until the tube is full. That looks... okay. I'm not sure how well it's going to work, but there's only one way to find out.
Here you go, boy. Now don't light this before I tell you to. Oh, man! I'll be careful, I promise. I can't wait to see how this one burns. Go on now, nothing to see here. Use the fireworks to distract the guard away from that door. Yes, yes. Hey, hey! Check this out. Too Stop. slow! What in Shadow's name are you? Apostle! You're dead! He won't hurt you again, child. I promise. Leave. Do not come back. My head's hurting. Why is my... What's happening? Who are you? Where's Ramin? Why am I tight? Alvani. You're not dead. How oh, in Shadow's name. I, 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 I'll pay you. I'll make you wealthy. I'll get you a pardon from the tower and... Shut your mouth. I need information. What do you mean by if that? If you speak out of turn again, I'll cut off your dick and shove it down your throat. The raid tonight. I don't know anything about a raid. I cannot justify torture. I'll have to convince him to talk to me, and trust that he reveals the truth. You believe you have more to lose by speaking to me. You're wrong. You've been consorting with a magical, a Dolmari, a child. You know, the punishment for even one of those crimes is execution. All three. They will make an example of you. They'll string you up in the tower square. They'll sever your genitals, gouge your eyes out, Dip your feet in molten metal. They'll make you suffer unbearable agony. You will plead for death. And death will come. But slowly. Slowly. Tell me what you know, or the tower will learn of your crimes. There... there will be a raid. In... in the magic ghetto, before the sun rises tomorrow. I'm not part of it. I haven't been in the meetings, I don't know the details. But they plan to root out the rebels and the collaborators hiding in Old Town. Some they'll exile to the islands, others they'll kill. As punishment for siding with the resistance, as a warning to others. That's all I know. I swear to it on my mother's office. Let's go over this again. Tell me everything you know. Please, don't kill me. I won't tell anyone about this. About you, I, I can't. They'll... They'll execute me. I'll do anything. I'll, I'll spy for you. I, I'll feed you information from inside the tower. Just... Just spare me. Please. For the love of the goddess, I beg you. He has much to lose if he reveals what happens here. But I can't risk it. And his crimes are too grave. 
There's always a risk that he will reveal what happened here. But if I spare his life, he could be of value to us. He has... You deserve no mercy. No! Shadow, take your black soul. Where's the guard? He's in a mud cellar, stuck to his knees in Elgwyn dung. He'll be busy for a while. You did good, Bip. What happened in there? Did you get what you needed? I did. Listen, you can't stay here in Old Town. The Azadi are coming. I'm not afraid of the Azadi. Nevertheless, you need to leave. I'll bring you to the Enclave and you'll be safe with- I'm not going anywhere. This is where I live. What if my parents come back? They'll be looking for me. You're not safe here. I'm sure your parents would be happier knowing you're with us. You just want to put me in an orphanage. Wait. Shadow. Children. The General is asking questions. I've heard. We must find Kian before... I'll make sure Hami's attentions are directed elsewhere. Tonight's raid on the Magic Ghetto will be a good start. What did he say? The General tells me that my men are sticking to the story, but that some of the prisoners are spreading rumors. It's of little concern. They will not live to see another interview. And arouse more suspicion? Don't be a fool, Vermon. Don't ever call me a fool. Then try not to act like one. Who else did he speak with? The Warden. What? I thought you were taking care of that problem. You're the one who worries about arousing suspicion. I couldn't simply have him executed. There are laws. And now the General has a witness. An infidel's testimony can never be used against Trueborn. But his words can fuel further investigations. The General will soon have other matters to concern himself with. We're stepping up the deportations and we're close to completing the machine. After that, Kian's death will be low on his list of priorities. And in the meantime, the General is pursuing leads. Like I said, tonight's raid will distract him. How so? Because it won't go well. The Rebels will strike. Many of his men will die, our forces will be on high alert, and, as Supreme Commander, it'll be Hami's job to clean up. He will blame you. And I will take responsibility. And action. There will be little time for his investigations. By the time the situation is under control again, other matters will have taken precedence. We will keep the General's attentions elsewhere until our mission here is done. And then, no one... No one will challenge us. I hope you're right. I always am. Come here. This is not the time for... I'm as hard as Nigali steel. This is exactly the time. I apologize for being late, but I have important- Every minute wasted could mean lives lost. Enu, can you tell us what you've learned? Not a whole lot. No one's talking. There's not even a whisper of a raid. I'm starting to think maybe Ulvik's loose-lipped, drunken Azadi was merely a braggart. Also, merely a braggart? I've been around you guys too long. I'm starting to speak like a sullen warrior. I went looking for our people in Old Town. They're standing by for my word. I don't want to pull them out of the city until we know for sure what's happening. Let's hope for their sake Anu's right. 
And there's no raid tonight. The raid is taking place, just before sunrise. We still have several hours. How did you come up? Hey, Big Blue, let him speak. The plan is to arrest as many magicals as possible, along with rebel sympathizers. It's a show of strength. They want us to be scared. Where did you get this information, Kian? From a trusted source. I met her here before we... Mystery Woman! I remember Mystery Woman! Well, I remember you talking about Mystery Woman. She's a friend of Ulvik's, right? We can definitely trust her. She told me about an Azadi officer who... visits with an underage Dalmari girl. And she told me where to find him. He was... He was with a child? That's... Th that's sick. And did you find him? I did. He told me that this will be their biggest raid on the ghetto so far. Given his rank and the precariousness of his situation, I believe him. How did you get him to talk? When he understood his predicament, he was perfectly willing to spill his guts. Uh, I don't know. Seriously? I mean, I'd much rather trust Kian's source than mine. What if this source of yours is playing you for a fool? What if it's bait? meant to draw us out and distract us. No Azadi would commit a mortal crime in order to set a trap. His soul is damned to the shadow for eternity. I think we should Maybe listen- Maybe your information is trustworthy, Kian, but I'm not willing to bet our position in Old Town on it. We'll tell our people to be vigilant. If there is a raid, at least they'll be forewarned. You're making a mistake. We'll know soon enough, Azadi. Where is the officer now? Did you let him go? I ended his life. You what? He'd molested a child. He deserved death. He will languish in shadow for eternity. I would have done the same. I'm sure he deserved it, but won't they come looking for him? Also, it sounds like we lost an opportunity to have a valuable source inside the tower. I couldn't let him live after what he'd done to the girl. At least you see her as a girl, and not just a magical. You made the right choice. The honorable choice. <laughs> honorable? You think it's honorable to murder a man? You're both insane. It's time we headed back to the Enclave. I wish you'd let him live. I mean, at least then we'd have a source in the tower, if nothing else. But I guess you're on Liko's good side now. He may not trust information unless it's being bled out of someone, but the man does enjoy a righteous murder. I'm just not so sure how I feel about it. Who's there? You? However did you get here? <laughs> 